Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Chris and you're watching VSense. On today's video, we're going to be talking about fragrances that are essentially romantic. These are all fragrances that I would definitely recommend on either gifting to someone for Valentine's Day or to also provide, you know, some nice comfort if you go on a nice date. So if you want to buy this for yourself and wear it, if you want to buy this and wear it to a nice state, you can. Or you can also gift this to someone as a beautiful demonstration of love for yourself and for this person. So I have 10 fragrances. I have a, a couple of bonuses here. I tried to group them for essentially being you know nice fragrances all of these are going to be more on the private leaning for the fragrance houses so i would say more like private lines of like dior armani tom ford these are not going to be your mass producers i did throw a couple in here that are mass fragrances fragrances themselves you know I, you can definitely go and get alternatives out there and i will definitely be speaking about the alternatives of these fragrances and what's out there that you can get at a cheaper more affordable cost because you know not everyone can afford to go and purchase all of these so let's just get right into it so the first fragrances that i have are from the house of guerlain these are kind of bonus fragrances i would definitely say that they are considered to be something that are more romantic the first one i have here is santal royale this is part of their uh, Orient collection. So this is a very nice fragrance. It is a sandalwood true and true. It has rose in it. It has some cardamom in it. It also has very warm woody notes in here as well, as well as a little bit of an incense touch in there and a touch of oud. So very nice. This is more dark, more mysterious, more warm. I would definitely say it's you know something that you would probably not want to gift to someone but it's a fragrance that you would definitely want to wear to a date you know to be a little bit more mysterious especially if the relationship is kind of new um if your relationship is a little bit you know uh on the older side maybe you want to throw something in there to spice it up i would definitely say that this one is one to go for the next one i have from guerlain is musk nobel this is the bottle here it is the red bottle. Um, it's kind of like a maroony type of rouge color. I have selected this one because it is musk in here. It has rose in here, has geranium in here. Uh, it has a lot of floral touches in here, but it's also very nice. It's, it's sweet, it's romantic, it's feminine. It is not overwhelming either. It's one of those fragrances that I would definitely say it can be worn for a date. With the other one that I just talked about, Santal Royale, this is one that I would definitely say is one of those what you cannot necessarily gift to someone unless you absolutely know that they are going to love it. This one can be gifted and it can also be worn. It's very versatile. It's very nice. It's very feminine. It's a luxury experience of a fragrance. So I would definitely check this one out as well. The next guy in this group is going to be Straight to Heaven by Killian. Um, I do have the Coffre bottle here. I also have the smaller version here. This is more of a masculine scent. I have seen women wear it. I definitely think that it, you know, leans more on the masculine side. It's more wearable for men, but women can also wear this fragrance as well. Um, this is a beautiful bottle. So if you really love someone, you're going to go out and buy this one. It does come with a purse sprayer that you can refill. Note about these guys, unlike the Dior bottles, this one actually comes out and it's hollow. So if that doesn't give you anxiety, I don't know what will because, you know, you're paying so much for this bottle and the juice inside of it is pretty pricey and, you know, it doesn't really have much protection when, when it comes to that at least. So this one is going to have cognac inside of it. It's going to have rum. It's going to have nutmeg. It's going to be a warm, boozy experience. It's going to smell like a very nice barrel of cognac that's been aging. Um, you know, that beautiful just rich smelling fragrance. That's what Straight to Heaven White Crystal is to me. I would definitely say it's a mysterious fragrance, but it's also one of those fragrances that if you want to go on a date where you're going to have some entertainment, some 
live music, some going out to a club or dancing, anything like that. This one lends itself to that occasion because it is one of those fragrances that although it is romantic, although it is, you know, something that's a little bit closer of an experience because this one doesn't have a lot of projection, if you will. It is one of those that you have to get kind of closer, more intimate to smell it after a while. Then I would definitely say to get this one because it's also a party fragrance and it's definitely a good one. The other one that I have from Killian is Rose Oud. Now this one, uh, I did do a review on it. I, uh, I, I will be honest, I like it. It's nice. It was boring to me. I have since tried this fragrance and I have worn it here and there and I can definitely say that this fragrance has grown like a rash on me. Uh, and I, <laughs> I definitely say that because this fragrance was definitely, like I said, more of a boring leaning fragrance. Once it does dry down, it does play with your chemistry. It does change quite significantly. And what I mean by that is it's not the same fragrance you spray out of the bottle. It does change quite a bit. It smells a little bit more... Uh, spicy it has the oud the rose uh, it's it's a very nice dynamic you know it also has saffron in here the bottle is just absolutely gorgeous this one's one that I would actually recommend for you to purchase for someone as a gift if you know they like oud if they're an oud person they like roses then definitely check this one out it is limited edition according to Sephora's website Again, there's no word on Killian's side if this is a permanent bottle or if it's limited edition, but it is a really good one. It is a really beautiful bottle and it's a fairly nice, easy wearable oud. Like I said, it changes quite a bit. It does become better of a scent as time progresses. Next on the list, we have Tom Ford. I think that, you know, Tom Ford it is one of those brands that definitely has a lot of mystery with it and, and not, not mystery in the sense where you're like, Oh, I don't know what they're making or what's going on with them. Uh, I say they're mysterious because their fragrances can have a lot of depth to them. At least the older releases can have some depth to them. The one I have here is Cafe Rose. I really, I mean, if anyone knows of a dupe for this one, let me know because this is a really great coffee and rose scent. Um, I think it's one of the more jammy, wet roses. I mean, it's a very natural smelling rose. It's not synthetic. It's not like rose water. It's literally like if you were to go smell a rose at a garden, this is what this would smell like. And it smells like, you know, you're in a nice cafe. There's coffee roasting in the background. It's a really beautiful mixture of a fragrance. It has a couple of other notes as well, but this one is a really great scent. It's very romantic. It's very sexy. It's very love is in the air type of fragrance. And I would definitely check this one out. This one can be worn by men and women. Uh, I definitely can see a guy wearing this with a nice, you know, outfit. And I can see a lady wearing this also in a very nice outfit as well. But this one is very versatile. I would definitely wear this on a date. If you get this for someone, I definitely think that they're going to know that you definitely have a really great taste and really great sense of style and sense of, you know, fashion and everything out there. Because, I mean, who doesn't know Tom Ford for being the king of fragrances when it comes to the private lines, at least. The next one we have here is Lost Cherry. Now, <laughs> I made a video as to why I would not purchase the new cherry collection, so Electric Cherry and Cherry Smoke, uh, and I kind of went hard on this fragrance in that video, uh, but I would definitely recommend this one because it is such a very, you know, it smells like cherry liqueur, so it smells like a date night as it is. It smells like a very expensive candle too, but it does smell like a date night because you get that very strong liqueur, you know, the, those roasted almonds in this fragrance, and it's very intimate. It's kind of like putting on a red lipstick. It is, you know, voluptuous, it is precious, it is glossy, it is red, it is very nice, and this one is definitely one that I would say would gravitate someone's attention if you're going on a date for the first couple of times because it is so unique, it is very different, uh, and I would definitely say that it's very suggestive if you will. So definitely check out Lost Cherry. Uh, just so you do know, Dossier does make a um, knockoff version, if you will. But it smells identical to this bottle. I would definitely check it out because, you know, this one's pretty pricey. I believe it's $5.50 for this size bottle, which is a little bit ridiculous when you're talking about perfume, you know, because you spray it, it's gone. Sometimes you can't even smell it once it's gone, so. The next one I have on here is gonna be by the House of Dior. Dior is one of the best actual fragrance houses out on the market. Uh, I definitely do really love their private range. They did 
do a price increase. So it's now $4.50 for this size bottle, which is the 8.6 ounce bottle. Um, not a bad price if you actually do the math and do the price breakdown per mil, but it is a really nice scent. This one's called Tobacco Color. It is tobacco. It has quite a bit of nice, you know, honey and plum notes in here. It is a very warm tobacco scent. It is a very, I don't know, it, it's, it's just iconic. It's one of those scents that you can definitely see someone wearing and you're like, I'm in love with you. And <laughs> that's what the point of Valentine's Day is, you know, finding something that works for you, something that works for your partner, and, you know, just wearing something that makes you happy. And I definitely think that this one can be associated with happy memories very quickly. The next one I have is a sample because I have not purchased this one, but this is also a Dior one. This is Amber Nuit or Ambre Nuit. Um, this scent is the number one selling fragrance for a Dior, at least in the private range. It is iconic. It is amber. It is, you know, very versatile. It's a light, clean, you know, soft uh, touch of floral in there, but it's a really great amber fragrance to wear. It smells delicious. It smells timeless. This one's one of those scents that you could probably make into your signature scent and wear it, you know, year round, or you can purchase it and make it your special occasion type of fragrance and wear it on those, you know, special moments such as Valentine's Day. If you do something that's gonna be very memorable, I would definitely say to check Amber Nui out because it's one of those that is really loved. I know this one leans a little bit more feminine. A lot of the Dior fragrances typically do. There's some of them that out there that don't, but they, tend to lean a little bit more feminine. This one does lean a little bit, but it's 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 a very little amount. You know, you can definitely wear this if you are a male as well and definitely enjoy and appreciate this fragrance. Next fragrance I have here is Blue Lazuli. This is by Armani. This is Armani's Privé's line, so their private range of fragrances. Uh, these are beautiful bottles, by the way, so I think they're worth the purchase just by the bottle itself. Um, this one is going to be a very warm mate and mantis with some plum as well as some sandalwood. There's a big woody base to this one. The plum gives it that very nice touch to this fragrance. It's very romantic. It's very warm. It's very great because, as you hear me out, when it comes to Valentine's Day, we typically celebrate Valentine's Day, at least here in the United States, or if you're anywhere besides on the coast it's typically cold so uh, this one does play very well with cold weather it is a very nice scent it's very romantic but the nice thing about this fragrance as well is i have not seen or heard of people wearing this it's a very underrated fragrance there's another one that i would also recommend by the house of armani which would be rouge malachi which is a red bottle that fragrance is really nice as well. That one I would say is more on the feminine side. It's more feminine leaning. Uh, and Blue Lazuli is definitely a true and true unisex fragrance. I can definitely see men liking this more than females, but you know, if you don't really care, I would definitely say that this one is a really great in the middle for the spectrum of gender at least. So definitely check out Blue Lazuli by Giorgio Armani and let me know what your thoughts on this are. Next one I have is another Armani fragrance. This is Armani Code Porfumo. This fragrance is, like I said, it is not a super wow fragrance. It's not you know, going to be the best fragrance out there, the most unique one, but it is going to smell good and it, it is going to be affordable. It is a really nice scent. It is it's a parfum, so it's supposed to last a little bit longer. Uh, I don't know if that's the case anymore with, with fragrance brands and now's market, you typically get, you know, parfums are typically, you know, an eau de parfum that is labeled as a parfum and it's not, it's not really what an, uh, it's not really what an old parfum used to be. So just to be clear, I think this one is a really great fragrance. It's warm, it's sexy, it's sultry, it's suggestive as well. It's classic, which is very important. It's something that you can, you know, think 20 years down the road and say, oh yes, I used to wear that. And, and they're not gonna be like, ew. You know how whenever you get someone that says, oh, I used to wear Amouage by Givenchy. And you're like, oh, you did. And so you go to the store, you're like, can I smell Amouage? And then you go into the store and they're like, here you go. They hand you a little spray card and you're like, oh, this is grandma's perfume. I don't think this is gonna be one of that. And I definitely think none of the fragrances on today's channel or today's video are ones that are going to age, you know, untastefully. And that's that's what's important about this. The next one that I do have here is by the House of Burberry. I have spoken about this one quite a bit 
This one's made by Francis Kirkshawn. It is a Burberry fragrance. He was a, you know, perfumer for this guy. And this one is Amber Heath by Burberry. This is Burberry's signature range. So if you haven't seen this guy, it is, you know, a very underrated fragrance line. The Burberry signatures line has some pretty good ones. It also has some misses, um, but this one is a really great one. It is Ambery. It has vanilla, patchouli, amber grease in this guy as well. So. It is very well balanced. This fragrance I definitely think has a lot more notes in it than I actually put on their description because it's such a unique scent. This is what I definitely see um, Baccarat Rouge smelling like if Baccarat, Baccarat Rouge was a little bit more mature. Baccarat Rouge, don't get me wrong, I used to love it. When it first launched and I worked in the industry, I remember that they were exclusive to Neiman Marcus and it was one of those scents that was, you know, very captivating. I smelled and I was like, Ooh, wow, this is amazing. And this is what this one represents. It smells similar to Black Rot Rouge, so you can kind of tell it's the same perfumer as created this fragrance, but it's one of those that smells even better. It has more depth, it has more of a versatility, it has more of an edge to it as well. And I think that's what's really so addicting to this fragrance. Um, I definitely think that the price point's not super bad. I believe they cost 260, if I'm correct for a 3.4 ounce bottle. This is the only size that they come in, but it is a really nice one. Very well for, you know, a Valentine's Day occasion. If you want to smell kind of sweet, you know, kind of, you know, mysterious, but you know, you also want to kind of give that vibe where you're like, I'm accessible to you. So definitely check out Amber Heath by Burberry if you are interested in something very nice. And the last one I threw in here, this, this one, one I kind of threw in here because I was like, why well, want to leave Vuitton fragrance in here? Um, but I only have two, you know, I've smelled quite a few of them. So I would definitely say other ones like Rose Vivance is a good one uh, or something like Cactus Garden, at least to me would be a good one. That one's discontinued though. Um, but I do think that out of the ones that I do have here, City of Stars is a more romantic one out of both of them. It kind of has a very soft cleanliness to it. It's very beautiful. So this is more of a daytime date type of thing. So if you're gonna go, go get a dinner, you know, midday and do some daily activities and you wanna wear something that, you know, screams romanticism, but it's also something that's accessible. It's something that's not too much. It's not gonna offend your person sitting next to you. I would definitely say City of Stars by Louis Vuitton in the California collection is the one to go. I mean, it's a beautiful bottle as it is. And you cannot go wrong with this brand overall. They pretty much do such a great job with their fragrances. Jacques Cavalier, the perfumer there. So thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. Let me know down in the comments what fragrances will you be wearing? Is there one that you are not going to be wearing in particular? I look forward to seeing all of your comments down below. I'll see you next time.